Hello, welcome back to Discover the SCP. It was an incident just prior to recording where cruelty was yeah. set behind the scenes. Dan Honey was eating an orange, you see. I'm going to be very clear, too. Well, it was pretty tough for him. It went something like I this. know. Mmm, yeah. what a delicious orange. Uh, I'm glad my friend died. Dan Honey! Why aren't you recording yet? Give me that shit! <laughs> Grabs orange. Throws it. <laughs> He's like, but, but the vitamin C, I, I <laughs> need it. Me. It's advancing up my throat. And I reach out for it, but then Donald stomped his boot down on it and crushed it. It's like, yeah. You yeah. can steal that re- scurvy once you're done recording my podcast. <laughs> and then I ripped it open in half. Uh, I picked it up off the ground after I stepped on it. I ripped it open in half. I squeezed it in my mouth until all the juice was gone. You couldn't have <laughs> any juice. At least there's still I seeds. It. I can plant a new orange. <laughs> Wait, what's he doing? <laughs> 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 It's crushing the seeds in my hand. <laughs> no! Salty Sorry, ass. were you hoping for a second chance? No, th- those were the future! <laughs> we we plant trees that we'll never sit in the shade of! No, you oh. definitely won't. <laughs> <laughs> and even with anyone else, isn't that the greatest legacy? <laughs> Looks like the only orange tree will be mine, on top of orange <laughs> And tree. I will enjoy the shade. <laughs> <laughs> Too bad you won't be living long enough to see it. Hits you with an apple. You're a doctor, by the way. <laughs> I just yeah, go to the dots. I smile about like <laughs> it was a fun life. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> Doctor Flashback. It's just getting his medical degree and then he dies. <laughs> it's like, why am I remembering this now? I thought I got sick of being a doctor. Uh, <laughs> got sick of being a doctor goes hard. Uh, what a great <laughs> life I had. <laughs> I'm sick of being a doctor. And it looks like there's no cure. Throws clipboard, uh, throws coat on the fucking the thing case, where the patient sits. I guess I gotta out. do more research. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we got. What's above PhD? <laughs> it's like level of parkour, like master. <laughs> he, yeah, PhD God. Is there a level higher than doctor? Can you Is be like a god for this, like the strongest doctor in the world? <laughs> <laughs> this <laughs> How do we measure he like, the greatest strength? PhD? Yeah, every year we measure the success ratio. We need to do doctors. power scaling for doctors. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. Well, it kind of does need to exist because you can have a really bad doctor. Like that just happens but, to you. What, what indicator do you think they should have <laughs> to demonstrate their rank? Like, on, at uh, care for patients. Uh, no, I mean like do treatment. You have, like, a badge successful. Or uh, maybe. I-, I was thinking it would be like they'd have uh, a ranking, kind of like the military, and uh, every time you reach a certain threshold, your rank goes up. Someone steps into a hospital, everyone feels the aura. It's like, Surgeon General. <laughs> he's wearing like three stars and a bunch of medals. <laughs> he's got like on a, his hat. It's like, it's, 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 it's like a trench coat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he has like a special golden mask. Apparently, it makes surgery more of a challenge. <laughs> this guy, is he wearing a surgeon training weights? <laughs> He takes off his bandages to reveal, like, his surgeon's eyes. They <laughs> <laughs> have two pupils that add, add in telescopic vision. <laughs> All right, let's read this article now. Like, that's a we skill you can develop. <laughs> yes. We're going back yeah. to Sobek's favorite SCP. This guy hates the- Sobek. Sobek! Sobek, get out of here. I'm Sobek. so sorry. Come here, come here. Let's have pull up a seat for the guest of honor, why don't we? <laughs> He said one thing he's one, one who, time. He's the one who commissioned this podcast, right? <laughs> he's the one paying for it. Oh, what was that? He didn't. <laughs> Let's get our producer <laughs> so back in here. <laughs> My God. <laughs> Leave him alone. <laughs> Stop slapping and punching him. <laughs> Can you just read the article? Sorry. I'm sorry, I didn't mean it. It's just a joke. It's just a little joke. Let's go back to <laughs> SCP 6001. <laughs> so we'll continue. <laughs> Location. It's just a please, please don't get mad at me again. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Location, Tacna, Peru. Uh-huh. Hold on, you were reading the narration, if I remember correctly. Go on. Yeah, well, we're swapping off because it's the next episode, so you're the narrator Damn. now. It's, it's like fairy rules. You've like got me with the rules. <laughs> <laughs> Ceremonies. I, I had to read your fucking Yap character earlier. My throaty hurt. Are you spoiling? <laughs> I hate spoilers! We drove out to the coast that evening. Actually drove. In the age of everywhere chairs and ferry pods, cars had survived as a niche hobby. Heaven. 
We rented a 1968 Porsche 483, <laughs> which I'd never heard of before. It was undeniably gorgeous. Primrose, let me die. Let me drive. <laughs> what the hell? Primrose! <laughs> Wait. Sorry. <laughs> Pull me up. Along in my utopia. <laughs> Primrose, let me drive, claiming I'd die of heartbreak otherwise. We sped along an, along an old crumbling highway that snaked to cliff's edge. It was growing late. To the left of me, the mountain glowed pale amber. To the right, the ocean was painted with a golden stripe, spanning from our car all the way to the setting sun. We pulled off near an overlook. Piro sat on the guardrail. I just leaned. As dusk settled in, I began to trust my eyes less and less. Was I seeing things? There were a few stars in the sky now, sure, but far too many reflections in the sea. The darker it became, the more I saw and marvelled. They weren't reflections. There was a city down there. A vast, glittering sea, spanning from the drop-off all the way past the horizon. White light speckled over great glass domes, connected by tendril-like tubes. Shapeless, gleaming satellites sped along the ocean floor in rows, like bands of quick-moving traffic. That's some of the imagery, but what I think of is the city where Jar Jar Binks lives. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who's not coming back, Jar Jar? <laughs> Primrose, why are we here and not there? You didn't tell me of underwater cities. We don't. Well, then what's all that? Well, it's a city, it's just not ours. The Atlantis super city belongs to the cephalophods. Octop- Octopoda, mostly. They don't talk to us. Oh, like at all? Mm-mm, not for about 50 years now. They were the compendium for a grand total of six weeks before they demanded agency, based... They just didn't get along with the rest of Earth kind. Something about the effects of higher thought on a creature who can use neurons extend through its entire body. Perhaps when your arms, legs, whatever, you can think for themselves, you don't need much more company. So we put them back in the ocean. You just gave a bunch of octopod octopod eye. Right. You just gave them advanced intelligence and threw them right back in the water like a bad catch? Then they built I'm sorry, did you say a super city? From Anchorage, Alaska all the way to New Zealand. And all this doesn't concern you. They look pretty damn advanced down there. What if they decide to take over the surface, too? We need to destroy them, but they need to die in the dark. <laughs> What's A6K? That's his universe. How very uh. A6K do you, David? What if they don't? <laughs> you have no enemies, David. <laughs> That's true. Just because they're not talking to us doesn't mean they're hostile. Not everyone gets along, but not everyone is out to kill you. You ha- <laughs> Literally, he's like, no, you have no enemies. <laughs> If we're ranking the failures of Pact 15 in terms of hostility, the octopod eye sits somewhere between jellyfish and aphids, and the insects nearly caused hell on Earth. Uh, what happened with the jellyfish? A moment of consciousness, then a very polite no thank you, based. <laughs> we laughed and enjoyed the silence for a while. It reminded me of something long ago. Lisa would have loved this. Lisa? Just an old friend of mine. A marine biologist. She was studying this anomalous coral substance one. Well, things can be a bit more dangerous on my side of reality. I'm sorry. I nodded. We watched the waves. I lost someone too once. Really? I mean, sorry, not to be uncouth, but given everything I've seen today, I have expected you people to have a handle on immortality. No. Well, yes, technically. We know how to end death. We even tried it for a while. It taught us exactly why it's essential for life to conclude. Care to elaborate? You know I can't. Then how about this person of yours? What were they like? They were a nerd. Oh Oh. my god, I don't like the chemistry they're building! (laughs) I wanted to ask more, but Primrose held up a paw, staring at the sky. We should get inside, it's nearly night time. Wait, seriously? Can't you see in the dark? What, are there boogeymen coming? Primrose didn't reply. Oh god, are there actually boogeymen coming? No, they're all in Tasmania now. I just don't want you embarrassing me, David. You don't know the customs here. And the night doesn't belong to us. She's literally a cat. <laughs> Nocturnal creature. Primrose nudge touching upwards. I followed the gesture and my own jaw hit the pavements. <clears throat> Grand silvery clouds had overtaken us. The sky had been perfectly clear only seconds before. At least there were clouds at a distant glance. And the one above us was nearly touching the mountain top. It was feathers. Millions of feathers fluttering together on threaded lines of white silk. Bound in a great misshapen ball. In brief flashes, I saw titanic musculature dip in and out of the cloud, skinless and grey, inhuman in its segmentation, serving as some unimaginable piece of living machinery within the mass. The cities beneath the sea were rolled round glass and bright artificial lights. The cities sitting atop of these clouds were all perfectly square, ivory and bone, and gave off a moonlit glow independent of any celestial aid. All part of sharing the world. Dinner? 
Damn. We're the, the com- oh, go ahead. No, no, no you go got ahead. this. No, it's fine. The Compendium recognizes the Nocturnal. Who are the Nocturnal? I mean, it's Bigfoot. They kept us out. You let us in. We will not turn away from them. The Nightland Covenant vote yes. Based. Oh, well, they're the Nightland Covenant now, not the Nocturnal. <laughs> well, that's mm. like the it's government name, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here we go. Location. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, these are the paragraphs. <laughs> Location. Yeah. Doesn't bore you. Osaka, Japan. Primrose brought me somewhere I'd do minimal, minimal damage. The bar we ate at only seated free. A narrow hole in the wall without so much of a sign out front. Primrose claimed it was the best ramen in the world. Given it wasn't my world, I took her word for it. We ordered and were served in the span of three minutes. As delicious as my soup looked, I was far more focused on the cook. It was a faceless creature, floating, appearing as though H.R. Geiger had designed a mermaid. Its tail ended with a wide, sharp spade that was caked with flour and noodle bits. Primrose bowed her head as it served her. I did the same. The soup was sublime, if a bit heavy on the garlic. Halfway through eating, Primrose jolted upwards, looking as though she'd had an epiphany. It was very much in the whiskers. She excused herself and darted out the door. <laughs> she left me to pay the bit, though. I was glad we'd paid in advance. A moment later, a new patron entered the bar, having to stoop quite low to fit in size. In my periphery, I could see he was very, very hurry. <clears throat> I sneaked sideways glances while we ate. The creature, or phenom, I suppose, was easily two metres tall. The stool beneath it strained against its weight. It was covered in a heavy chestnut-brown pelt, fine as the hair on my head, and embarrassingly more well-camped. Camped. It's fl- Sorry, I thought about Sobek. It's flat face and free hair. What? <laughs> it's mouth and eyes. No one related. I, just like I feel like Sobek better watch his fucking back. That's for sure. <laughs> he embarrassed me. He, safely. <laughs> he did no such thing. It's mouth and eyes that glossy and black both. It smelled like dry mountain air. You better not ever find yourself on a mountain, Sobek. <laughs> So back, please <laughs> oh. come to America. I'll protect you. <laughs> Once it noticed me stirring, I felt a nervous chill run up my spine as our eyes met. It gave me a slow nod and returned to its needles. Not wanting to risk my luck further, I put my bowl up on the counter and fled out into the night. There, I found Primrose waiting for me. A large bottle held up by her metal needle collar fingers. It had a single black kanji symbol painted on its little evil. Primrose, what's that? This, David, is very strong liquor. And what are you doing with that very strong liquor, Primrose? Well, I'm going to drink it, David, and you're going to help me. Wasn't the goal here for me to stand out as little as possible? That was my original plan, yes, but it was boring. My new plan is to blame your every possible misstep on the fact that you're drunk. It will go far more smoothly if you actually are. I thought I was supposed to be doing research. I thought you were on vacation. Come on, the sun is down. You're a guest in a strange world. You've no one to report to. Loosen up. Submit to the local customers. My God, I don't like this peer pressure. Yeah. Trust in your guy. Just, just have a damn drink with me, David. <laughs> Come on, loser. You don't like beer. Come on, don't you want my other world beer? <laughs> don't you want to be cool? Fine, one drink and only to be polite. I was gonna cut the. <laughs> yeah. No, keep going. No, no, it's your, it's your move. No, right? you, you, you did the last one. This is for you. Uh, by the yeah. rules of ceremony the, established by yourself, this is now yours. <laughs> the compendium <laughs> recognizes the watchers. Can we stop waxing fucking philosophical for a minute here, big bros? What? what Wait, trying? is this supposed to be para watch? I think so, yeah. <laughs> Why big bros? Big brother. <laughs> We're not 84, talking. Big brother. No, I, I understand the reference. I just, it feels weird. <laughs> Can we stop We're waxing not talk- philosophical for a minute here, Onishan? <laughs> we're not talking about jamming our fists down their dimension hole we're talking about transparency remember once upon a magical time when you kept us in the dark remember when it was all you swinging cards up on an ivory hill and us plebes down in the valley of the shadow of darkness or whatever it didn't work it's never worked we've always seen you even if our vision was a bit cloudy you can't hide the truth and you can't keep people out we get in anyway and when we do we're pissed off we take all the secrets you've been hoarding and make them into impractical impossible jokes the collective says art is a statement well here's our statement you're not gods. Plus, come on. A6K is essentially full of aggro versions of you guys. You really want to raise a red flag with them? Long story short, I'm he- I'm with the live tweet and the moon monkey. Oh, so, okay. So I think that is the nocturnal. Jesus Christ. These guys are not. Uh, all right. I, I, Primrose would have words for them. <laughs> well, the, I think the you audience can call them moon monkeys. 
That is true. We start drawing lines between us and them, and all you become is gatekeepers. We only need one of those, and I don't see any of you holding a burning sword. We're not above them. We don't deserve more than them. We are them. The Watchers Forum votes yes. Five, five. Yeah. You ready for this? Yeah, go ahead. Prime <laughs> Dimension Theory is goddamn comic book nonsense, you crazy hairball. This, this from the guy still measuring reality fluctuations with fucking humes. What do you know, you, you half ape? The primrose is spent here. Humes are stupid. <laughs> the fucking humes. I think we were singing karaoke before that conversation. The next few hours sit in my mind like a spilled puzzle. I remember the pieces, but not quite how they fit. In my defense, I had a lot more than one drink. I remember the streets changing around me, filling with creatures both nightmarish and spectacular. Flocks of shining, ghostly figures swam overhead, literally as though the sky was a deep, dark pool. An animate sand duel rolled between my stumbling legs, bits of chicken bones and loose gravel churning within. It was a brief argument after we bumped into a family of Italian tourists, who for some reason sounded like Shishin Cicada. Before there was a scuffle, we dumped into a noisy bar. Oh wait, isn't that another article we read? Like the yeah. weird cicada? Yeah. Clearly defined u- unifying properties across reality that cannot be explained by random prob- probability. Atoms can only be arranged in so many damn ways. Biology follows other universal processes. You have gravity, you get skeletons. You have photons, you get eyes. You. I'm not just talking about the... Pro- I like that they accounted for me reading this here. Proliferation yeah, nice. of carbon-based life across quasi-incompatible ecology. I mean, religious and cultural recurrence is the greenstone mirror alone. Social hierarchies. Brains wrinkling to conceptualize the unknown. <gasps> Current. What about the Henlow theory of cross-dimensional subatomic seeding? Henlow. I just threw of headroom for breakfast, that quaking quack. Don't you talk to him like that! And another thing, little Miss Stylish, little Miss Blazer and Bow, orange and purple don't mix. Well, I will scratch you. The class! Do you want to get scratched? <laughs> yeah, see, see? This guy, <laughs> this guy gets it. Oh, of, co- of course you'd agree with the orb. Oh my gosh, she's not politically correct now. <laughs> <laughs> the orb. I love the orb. <laughs> From there, at some point, we spilled back out into the street with at least five new inebriated friends. We lost them just as quickly, which I didn't mind, as they were both small birds and extremely loud. I did lose Primrose around a corner, though, which meant I was very much lost myself. Even emboldened by the spirits, I was too nervous to ask for directions until I found another human, which took me a surprisingly long time. There was a man in a black suit standing under a street lamp outside a hospital. He had no answers for me, but he did offer me a cigarette. I wouldn't usually, he said to me, but this is your last day in this world. I'd say it counts. I have no idea how he knew about my deal with Primrose or what he was counting, but he was still a very nice man. I like that. Did you remember that one? Uh, no. It's the SCP who offers you a cigarette like on the day you die. Oh, wait, does that mean Caspian's about to die? No, he's your last day because he's going to leave this world. Oh, oh, that's cute. Not knowing what Yeah, else. and he, like, sits there with you, right? He's yeah. like, a good guy. Oh, I didn't know he was chill like that. Not knowing what else <laughs> to do, I stumbled across someone to standing electronic... If you think about it, this is kind of like 5000 Part 2. There's just so many references. Mm, not knowing what else to do, I stumbled towards a standing electronic booth in the middle of the road. Its holographic sign was the same, in the same shape as uh, Primrose's brooch, the glib and eye. When I came within a few paces, a second projection appeared. One of an androgynous human, all made of blue lights. Uh, hi... Good evening. How can I help you? Um, uh, I'm looking for a cat. Would you like a listing for animal shelters? Or would you like to connect to the Field Land Community Registry? No, no, I'm... Look, sorry, I'm not from around here. I'm from this place, uh, she called it A6K. Would you like to be patched into the ongoing compendium judgment on A6K Unity? Uh, yes. Then the booth showed me. It sobered me up quite a bit. Oh, who are the unnamed? Hmm. Uh, who are they supposed to be? I mean, they're the fairies. Oh. The compendium recognizes the unnamed. There are no boundaries. There is only the path. Size and scale and circumstance are simply perceptual, prescriptive, subjective. They are not them, we are not us, no more than you are you, and we are we. A pinprick can be as wide as any road, so long as there is the means to travel. If it can, and it can, then it should, so it shall. There is no yes and no, there is no stop and go, there is only the path, and its splits always converge eventually, entirely, ultimately. 
Two paths diverged in the wood, and we? We choose the path of bravery, for only a fool fights entropy. We will travel the path with them. From a city in a forest where all roads meet, here comes a vote of yes. Mm. Location, a hilltop somewhere. That's really all I'd ask the chair for, a hilltop somewhere. I was just outside some small town, the kind you could find anywhere, really, but somehow I knew it was America. Because <laughs> you would feel that girl, oh, you were saying her, huh? Cacao! You know what I'm saying, brother? <laughs> Smells of apple pie and gasoline. Where are we? Wow! Mm. <laughs> Guy who's never tasted American pie and gasoline. <laughs> you have? <laughs> yes, I've tasted gasoline. <laughs> yeah, I can tell. Mm. <laughs> There's a <laughs> large of the gods. <laughs> There's a large oak tree on that hill, and I sat against it for a good long while alone. Eventually, Primrose found me. She brought the bottle with her. David, thank goodness. I was hopping on all sorts of rooftops looking for you. You silly old second cousin to a bonobo. Hello, Primrose. Whoa, have you been some kind of multi livid phenom this entire time, David? You seem positively lucid. Uh, hmm. There was a vending machine. It was all black with a keypad and it asked me to make a request. So I asked for something to sober me up. It tasted like those awful cinnamon candy hearts, but it worked. Oh, well. Good for you. Now you have plenty of room for the rest of this bottle. Why am I here, Primrose? Primrose has paused. Her tail drops. You are not supposed to ask that. I'm asking. Why am I here? David, come on. We've been having such a fun night. Tell me why I'm here, Primrose. Look, just I'm way, way too drunk for this conversation right now. God damn it, Primrose. Tell me why I'm here. Because I just wanted one more day with my best friend, okay? Huh? Silence rang out after the shouts. A few black-winged birds took flight from a nearby tree, but after that, everything was painfully still. The David Caspian of this dimension. Yeah. Oh, wait, was his friend also like the primrose of his dimension that he lost? I don't know. I don't think so, because she's oh, a cat. Okay. Uh, no, I know, but he mentioned that there was like a marine bio... Oh, no, that was someone else. Uh, where were we at? You were telling me that something happened to him. Something happened to him. Can be dangerous on this side of reality too sometimes not every singularity leads to nice places i leaned back into the tree and stared at the dark canopy above i'm sorry i had suspected but i'm sorry primrose yeah well you should be fun drinking is one thing but now i have to ramp it up to morose drinking so i still need to know why i'm here i just told you not the personal reason, the time-sensitive reason. Primrose, what is the compendium voting on right now? What happens to my reality if they vote yes? Primrose looked at me wide-eyed. She set the bottle down. Unity. And what does that mean? It means the compendium does what it did here, but it's over there. It makes things better, it takes over. And if they vote no? Singularity can't be closed, David. You know that. The sheer in reality, by definition, has to be stronger than the reality itself. It's there forever. So, either your reality is viable, or it's a problem. Either the compendium unifies of 86k, or they erase it. Nope. Uh-oh. <laughs> Me looking at, like, the last ten years, I'm finished. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, this one's yours, I believe. It's not. <sighs> yes, it is. By the rules of the core, established by your own I did self. the last... Two of these. And now to, you must complete the rule of three. <laughs> you fucking... That's not how this works. It's like packed. <laughs> oh, fucking... All right, but this is the last one I'm doing. I think least. it's the last one, so that's fine with me. <laughs> the Convenium recognizes the peacekeepers. There's been a lot of talk today about what we bring to the table. Why each of us is here. Well, the peacekeepers know why we're here. You people need a villain. You need some son of a bitch to blame all the hard decisions on. You need someone to sit here and say, take him out and shut it down. So you can go home that night and feel like you really tried to make the right decision. But oh, if only those bastard basekeepers would let you. We're also the ones you send in when diplomacy fails. With the jarheads, you teleport off to the cults, the bleeding rivers, and the freaky upside-down cities full of immortal de-slurping fucks. Because guess what? Sometimes things just want to kill you. You can't leave them alone, you can't relocate them, you can't talk them into being good. They just want to kill you. So we kill them. Don't forget who sands down all the rough edges of your perfect world when the pieces don't fucking fit. 
Now that I made my therapist proud, I'll get to the point. We all still want the same thing. A safe, stable world. We're willing to compromise our methods if you've got a better option. That's not how things work at A6K. <sighs> we say that. They only compromise it. when it's... We die in the dark so they can live in the light. <laughs> live in the light. You don't understand our perfection. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 173, obliterate them. Turn the lights off. I love the idea of like... <laughs> it's it's kind of funny... <laughs> So, like, their whole culture, right, is that, like, over here, they, like, uh, all work together. And, like, could you imagine if they saw the, the fucking, like, suicide squad they keep in normal SCP? <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> like, like, Iris and all the dudes. The too. Do you Why like? do they all have bomb collars on? They might try to betray us. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you know? <laughs> you can't trust these anomalies. <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, fucked up. <laughs> It's not how things work in A6K. We've seen that. They only compromise when it's do or die. They take shortcuts. They try to break Phenom. Like, that's ever a good fucking idea. A6K is a problem. And frankly, we should be treating it like we treated so many other problem dimensions. We can't trust them. The Global Peacekeeping Initiative votes no. So this is the GOI, I presume. GOC, yeah. GOC, my bad. Yeah, I don't fuck with the guy, okay? Yeah. All right. Location a hilltop somewhere. When we first met, out of some strange cross-universal courtesy, I'd recommended Primrose and Paralyze Me. 22 hours later, she'd done just that. I sat frozen at that hilltop, holding my knees to my chest. I couldn't blink, I couldn't breathe. The blood was frozen in my veins, refusing to pass through my heart. The gates of my mind ground to a screeching, cracking halt. Unity. Or erasure. When that wall of anxiety weakened, just the slightest bit, a frantic burst of contingency ease erupted from my mind. They spread out before me like steep, jagged paths. I could run back to the chair, maybe. I could ask it to bring me to the rooftop again. I could find some way to return to my reality to warn them. Should I warn them? Would it matter? Would they believe me? Could they stop the compendium? Would they strike first? Would I just be deciding whether to destroy this reality or my own? How could I trust people I've known for less than a day? How could I trust a ruling body I've never even seen? How could I trust my own reality? I've never seen the council either! I turned to look at Primrose, and she gave me an expression I truly couldn't place. It was like she was holding in a very large breath. Then she started laughing. She fell onto her back and laughed, rolling about in the damp grass. Uh, oh, there's no invasion, is there? Gatekeeper, no. Oh, gracious mother above, oh, Pabfi and Olden, you, you really are the most gullible man I've ever met. I just got here, Primrose. Of course I'm gullible. Christ! Well, what does unity actually mean, then? Primrose caught her breath and smiled at me. Contact. Unity means reaching out to your reality and offering a discord. That's it. That's all. That's not what the GOC <laughs> suggested. <laughs> Up there, they were like, let's fucking kill them. No, they said, <laughs> they said no. <laughs> no, no. Yeah, no to unifying. Yeah, and the vote's on unity. <laughs> um, <clears throat> and call it contact. The Compendium is a scientific institute, David. They like using fancy words. I finally exhaled. I fell back onto the grass, hands splayed, and stirred up at the stars. You're an asshole, Primrose. Oh, it serves you right. It told you not to ask why. So they just want to talk to us. We have to start. After a time, after all settings in with each other, then we start bringing over humanitarian aid, maybe some low-level technology if you want it. It's still an invasion of a kind, just a very slow and completely voluntary invasion. The moment you guys tell us, get lost, we get lost. Uh, and what if there's disagreement on that? What if one part of our world wants you there and another doesn't? Well, it doesn't matter. It's got to be unanimous. So it's never happening then. <laughs> Once you guys yeah, can come to some kind of say, consensus, some kind of alliance. I'm, I'm all for, I'm all for like this ideal perfect world, but like this, this never going to be, if any solution you have ever requires everyone to agree, that's not a real solution because it's never, ever going to happen. Ever. Uh, shared scientific it, council for the betterment of the word, if you will, and then you can call us back. Uh, and you do this often? Often enough. We have these kind of votes whenever we stumble onto a new dimension. It's not often the old compendium needs to be called, though. Usually it's pretty cut and dry for bridge unity. The answer's usually no. It may just be talking, but we do realise the destabilising effect it can have. After all, like you said, what some people want to stay and others don't. It might bring about alliances, or it could cause global war. And you don't destroy realities when they vote no. Well, no, David, of course we don't. Ironically, dimensional ruptures are the one phenomenon we do actually contain. We seal it off, obscure it, and monitor it. Destroying a whole reality, I don't even think the Compendium has that kind of power. Probably. 
there have been rare times when we've offered mercy, I suppose, but those have been dimension where literally everything has gone right to hell. Your reality isn't that far gone, and you're certainly not a threat. You're just... Well, clearly, you're a serious grey area. I didn't know what to say to any of that. I almost felt wrong that there wasn't some grand calamity on the horizon, some awful punchline to this adventure. I just lay there, zen-like, in my total disbelief of the universe. It's Primrose sighed and settled down next to me. David, I know more about alternate realities than anyone in my world. I certainly more, know more than you, no offence. I've been in it for about 60 years longer. To tell you the truth, I have no idea why our worlds are so different and yet so similar. I don't know if it's the chicken or the egg with your, you people and your phenomenon. Does your hostile reality make you aggressive and distrustful? Or is it your distrust and aggressive making your reality hostile? Is it you? <laughs> are you Gertrude Satsu because you're the strongest? <laughs> <laughs> are you David Caspian? <laughs> because you're the smartest? <laughs> <laughs> is it circumstance? Are you the surgeon general because you're the best doctor? Are you the best doctor because you're the surgeon general? <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking walking through the hallway. Yeah. There's like I like the idea of a do- like a fallen doctor like ghetto as a surgeon. I had I had I had a dumb idea for a fucking character based on Ashdel Duran's bullshit. It's like it's like a doctor with a martial art, but the martial art is they hit you in precise ways that heal your body. <laughs> <laughs> my like body, you, my arm is reconnecting. I shifted the pressure <laughs> in your skeleton a little. Don't work it out too much, okay? <laughs> I shoved my pinky into your heart, stimulating blood flow to create a quicker valve. healing. My force. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> is uh, A6K just one big tempest in a teapot spiraled out of control? And for our part, are we just fundamentally different from you? Or are we just the product of some nebulous domino effect from thousands of years ago when one human decided to be kind to another? Primrose shrugs. It's a finicky ball of string, our scientific field. That's also a cat phrase, by the way. You can't use it. I glanced over at Primrose for a moment. 60 years, huh? Primrose nodded. How old are you? Primrose batted at my face hard and stalked off towards the chair. The sun began to rise. Uh, you have to read this one. That was our promise. Damn it. I did promise. Damn it. By the rules of the quorum, I do have to follow my promise. <laughs> It's on it. I'm rotten bull stiltskin right now. You've tricked me. <laughs> the how do you beat him again? You have to make Rumpel Stiltskin say his own name or something. Say his name backwards. Oh, uh, how do you, how do you even accomplish that? I don't know. <laughs> Presumably, <laughs> they did it. The compendium right. recognizes the foundation. It always comes down mm. to us, doesn't it? It's only fair. We did start all this. We've seen worlds hollowed, fed up to a screaming wrought iron moon. We've seen planets consumed by death, undeath, and repugnant life. We've seen it all horribly ever enfolding under a bleak red sun. I would never hold any reality to some perverse contest of calamity, but I can say what has pained me the most. Seeing a beautiful, pristine world of happy people, <coughs> only to arrive just as all the flowers bloomed. We couldn't even tell them what was coming. There was so little time. Forgive me. I don't mean to wallow in the past. You need us to be the rational ones, right? We all need to admit a terrible truth. A6K is the closest we've ever come to finding a true parallel reality. We may sit here condemning them, but the fault remi- that remains. We've never found anyone quite so much like us. We rose from the dark together, stronger for our hardships. Who's to say they won't do the same? They could be our equals. They could even rise above us one day. But that triumph can't come from us. It has to come from them. The Foundation votes no. But with an addendum. We seal the gate, but not entirely. We keep an eye on A6K and let them find us. When they do, we'll greet them without security, containment, or any protections. When they're ready to step into the light, we'll be there. Shall we take it to a vote? This is not the foundation I know. <laughs> you, you this, fell is, off. this is this is like a, this is like a fanfic that mischaracterizes the foundation. <laughs> he would not fucking say that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, looks what like we're at the what end. What if it's last like part? where it's like they had like a cringy phase in middle school where they thought they were like have special powers. <laughs> Yeah, it's my like, right arm. It's telling me to exterminate like, the anomalies. Oh my god, they're still con- like obsessed with containment. Oh my god, don't look. <laughs> oh, they're still saying we die, die in the dark so oh. you can live in the light. <laughs> oh, I'm so embarrassed. No, don't look, GOC. <laughs> <laughs> All right, shall we? This last bit? Yeah, location Tokyo. And there we were, back on the rooftop again. Back in the lab again. 
<laughs> my lab coat a rat appeared with me hanging off the back of the chair I thanked it twice and told it what a wonderful job it had done today it gave a pleasant little rattle Primrose sat where I'd first seen her but now she was facing away I walked up and stood with her watching the sun rise for a second time now over the vast canopy of incredible architecture vibrant green and polished white you know if, I gotta be honest if it's me I'm not leaving <laughs> yeah I'm not leaving stay here too it's like you <laughs> I'm taking you hostage. You're not sending me back. <laughs> Falls away. It's like you can't. Well, like by their logic, it'd be like, I don't want to be sent back. So you wouldn't do that to me, right? You'd be forcing that. It's on like, me. you're from another. It's like I grab the shirt and put a gun to it. It's like, no one fucking move. <laughs> I live in the light so you can die in the dark. I don't care about the dark anymore. I have tasted the light and I want more. <laughs> Just Killian Murphy with the fucking gun to his head. <laughs> it's like, you can't let me waste a human life, right? Yeah. <laughs> Myself I don't, don't want to go back if I have to keep mute. I'll kill myself. <laughs> Did you imagine now. getting to experience the everywhere chair and then you have to go back to airplanes and cars? Yeah, no. I would unironically. It would be an incident. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be the guy who builds like ten thousand chairs in the garage. Like I have to be close. This <laughs> like, like, back is like, what happened? Doctor Kaz was like, we need to invade. <laughs> <laughs> I need to believe the riches they have. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Primrose. It seems the cat's out of the bag. I managed to get something from their dimension <laughs> over my hands. I've got the Cassie. <laughs> <laughs> the council will be pleased. International incident <laughs> of the other universe. <laughs> they go like back to being evil because they lost Cassie. <laughs> but, yeah, that's true. The foundation of the universe is like it's time. <laughs> Wake up, the O five. <laughs> They've been frozen. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, the demon like generals of the foundation. It's like the supreme, like covered in dust. They haven't moved in so long because they've been satisfied. <laughs> Slowly rising from their chairs. Everyone's you know, finger oh. twitches. It's like she's. You need dark. someone to die in the dark. Then it's like well, well, it's well. Cassie. <laughs> someone didn't give me a vote about whether she gets to wear blue jeans today. <laughs> I've done so many ske- character sketches. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, hold on. Where, where are we at? Um, I never did ask how they grew ivy so large. I decided not to. I didn't need to know. It was spectacular and that was enough. I didn't think it'd be that close. I looked over at Primrose. The vote, I mean. I knew the charity would be on board. They love helping the helpless. And your world is the very definition of helpless. Primrose... The Apex too, maybe. My vote had to count for something. Plus, the canine collegiate are all about inclusivity. But the amphibian pod can be just sticks in the mud. Primrose. And it was anyone ge- anyone's guess about how the people of the forest would vote. It always is. Nocturnals were a real surprise, given what you people did to them. But what the good goddamn was the collective even saying? Did you understand a single... Hey, Primrose. She stopped talking, but wouldn't look at me. Much as I'd learned about how a cat emotes in this world, I couldn't read her at all. I could guess how she was feeling, though. Thank you for today. She didn't reply. And, uh, sorry I forced you to let the cat out of the bag about... Ah, sorry. Is that a cat-only phrase? You can use it. (laughs) (laughs) He got the cat (laughs) pets! You can say it. (laughs) White boy wet dream. (laughs) You've got a, <coughs> you've got a. St- <laughs> I can't get over that. I'm sorry. <coughs> you've got a strange but you're very right. beautiful you're world right, here, Caspian. Primrose. <laughs> you're all right, Caspian. It could be your world too, you know. Oh yeah, sure. I'll stay. I'll stay. Fuck. Fuck <laughs> yeah, my universe. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Immediately. I would have suggested it to be honest. It was my it was turn. My tur- to be oh, go ahead. No, 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 you got it. I watched the yeah. sky turn from muted orange to a pale, promising blue. I mean, I can't just pluck you out of A6K again once it's sealed, but there's no real reason I have to send you back. I'm sure I could come up with some excuse for the compendium, some long-term, cross-cultural, trans-dimensional, quantum quark... I'll figure it out. And if you're worried about your SCP people, we could send back a clone or an android, or... We've recently found these lentil-based, human-mimicking life forms in Nepal. They can only drool and stumble around, but I doubt your stupid reality will notice. I just smiled weakly. Primrose's words eventually faded into a low mumble. By the time I turned to look back at her, her head was hanging low. It really was an incredible day. You're not going to tell them, are you? Your bosses, I mean. 
The SCP Foundation? Oh, good God, no. I'll make something up for them. But actually, I can think of someone who would appreciate all this. They're always up for a good story, and they can keep a secret. Wait, who? I don't know. Fimmer has nodded. I tucked my hands into my lab coat. Without any great fanfare or farewell, I knew it was time to go. Before I did, I asked Primrose for one last thing. She grumbled, but agreed. I pet her head and vanished. Fuck. That was good. Damn. He could have had the... He's going to regret that as soon as he remembers what it's Fuck. like to travel normally. As soon as you hear, like... You hear like, hey, you need to get down to floor six. The statue killed five more D-class. We need help burning the bodies. All right, you're on shit cleaning duty. <laughs> As soon as he, uh, the first time he hears a car horn again, he's like, like I'm going to kill myself. <laughs> yeah, Jinkley, Tony, watch out. That statue's been eating well recently. He <laughs> had <laughs> <had> a bad meal. <laughs> he's got rock poisoning. <laughs> Believe uh, me, you can tell. <laughs> I would have stayed in the universe. Fuck, fuck that, like, nobility yeah. loyalty shit. I would yeah, have been I like, have yeah, no of course loyalty. I'll live here. I've, Are I've you kidding me? I've never felt loyalty to anything. <laughs> They call him the ultimate traitor. <laughs> How can I betray you if I never had loyalty towards you? He's the Benedict. He's the Benedict Arnold of. Ri- I think my favorite thing Tan ever told me is like Benedict Arnold. When you go through the American schooling system, at least when I was a kid, they play him up as like this ultimate traitor and the villain. And Tan's like, I don't America. think the British care about him. <laughs> yeah, he's like some loser. <laughs> Not he's valued at all. He picks the wrong of side the American of the revolution. <laughs> <laughs> Lucifer uh, versus Benedict Arnold, the strongest traitor in history versus the strongest <laughs> traitor of today. But like, did you say like Britain did not give a shit about him? There's like, he's not, no honor for him. He's not really even a. He's not even a, an anecdote in this country. Really, no one gives a shit. Yeah, and he gave. He fucking gave everything for them. <laughs> it's up. like reward is a traitor deserved. <laughs> He never knew loyalty since the day he was born. He just didn't have the strength <laughs> to adhere to his worldview. <laughs> ben- oh, Benedict Arnold was born an arrogant baby. <laughs> yeah, th- that's that's a high note. It's sad. Okay, that well- <laughs> as a child, he chose a different mother because he did to betray his own. We're at an interesting point in our lives because we have like enough time that we need to keep doing things, but we don't really have enough time to read a proper article. Do you have anything like a short story we could read? Um, not really. Um, Do you have any short articles? Well, I have plenty of short articles. I'm a, I'm a compact guy, but let me have a look. Yeah, give me one of your Tanhony articles. <laughs> Why'd you say that? They're not real articles. Give me one of your like lesser SCP articles. <laughs> you know, the ones you write. G- <laughs> He says this like I don't think he's the best writer I know. Well, that's no. not true. Quantum's the best writer I know. Jeez. Actually, Hippo, maybe. Oh. One of those two. But you're Here's off a short there. one. Here's a short one I did. Uh, this is yeah. 6435. This is okay. called Row. Row? Yeah. Oh, you wrote this. I think I remember you writing this like after we started Pod. Uh, yeah, I wrote this at work. If, for an anecdote. <laughs> I think I might have vaguely skimmed this but not read it. Oh, how read Because this sure. picture looks familiar. All right. Yeah, I, I think <clears> the entirety <throat> of this thing was written in like a few hours at work. So. Oh, I like the cute little like header you used at the top in the format. Very pretty. Yeah. What? How come when I hover the image, there's like a bar that appears but doesn't have anything? <laughs> I don't know why. It does. Oh, so you just didn't give a swag. Like I said, the laziness <laughs> of a honey. <laughs> I was born <clears throat> an American baby. What can I say? Item number 6435, level 3 confidential. Containment class safe. Disruption class dark. Risk class notice. Special containment procedures. And there's a forest photograph and it looks like a hole in like a bunch yeah. of bushes and trees. Spirit photograph as well. Special containment procedures. As SCP-6435 cannot be breached by living souls, physical containment is a non-issue. Posthumous communication with agents accepted into the SCP is to continue until coherence is lost. Description. 6435 is afterlife NR293102, colloquially referred to as Row. 6435 consists of a colossal forest with a convoluted network of footpaths running through it. While it cannot be confirmed, testimony from deceased agents implies that 6435 is an infinite space. Time within 6435 measures one-to-one with reality. 6435 servitors will alternatively provide comfort to inhabitants of 6435 and physically torture them. Initially, this reward-punishment cycle was believed to operate on a karmic retribution or rotating martyrship system. 
But further investigation suggests that it is entirely random. As this information is judged too damaging to agents, it is not communicated to them. As an example of typical 6435 conduct, an ordained saint was boiled alive for 19 years straight, continually provided with material comforts for the next two years, and then flayed over the course of a further year. Typically, this unpredictable cycle of torture and pleasure results in the inhabitants of 6435 losing their mental coherency over the course of their first 10 years. Thus, while no mechanism exists to eject spent inhabitants, only a minority of the population is capable of conscious thought at any time. Unlike conventional afterlives, which spawn in response to some strong faith or idealistic need, 6435 bears no religious or ideological markers. At any rate, it is unclear what belief system would have spawned such a reality. It currently accepts 0.01% of deceased souls, while accounting for 14% of human suffering in the post-death ecosystem. So this is like, it, it's like you, you get a fucking bad roll on your ass. Yeah, afterlife. exactly. It's like, I'm going to torture you forever for no reason. <laughs> But you sometimes get nice Yeah, there's no... Yeah, but (laughs) eventually it will switch. You don't know how long. (laughs) Idle death gamble. (laughs) What the fuck is the point of this article? (laughs) Me spawning in now. (laughs) What the fuck is the point of this place? (laughs) I'm very surprised. That was like short, short. Yeah, that was... Oh, I already rated it with a plus. Yeah, Yeah, I already upvoted it, so I must have read it before. Do you have anything else for me that's that short? Uh, no, that is a rare one that I did specifically to be sh- a short article. Interesting. I'm surprised how many upvotes it got. Oh, you don't like it? No, it's good. it's just like surprising because like people hate short SCPs. They kill you. I think they come they've come back in terms of popularity. I've got one more then. I've got SCP eight zero four three. Maybe you like this one. Yeah, send it to me. Maybe it'll be better. This one is called on and on and on and on. Who wrote it? Me. Really? Yeah. Wait, you write things? I just wrote the last one. What are you talking about? This bit doesn't even make sense. <laughs> oh, look at this. June 26th edit. Grammar. <sighs> you see how, Damn, what, a, what a creature he is? The first time, <laughs> thing he does is look for like a disc to find. Hold on. I think... I think I've already read this one. This is the one where the guy talks about how he like went through an infinity yeah. in like a single moment. And then he gets fucked up. And yeah. then it happens again. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> uh, this one was good. Do you have any others? Uh, Jesus, uh, hold on. <laughs> write more! I don't want you! I do write. <laughs> I write so much. I write, I write April's face. I write, 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 Hey, write. hey, there, there. It was hard. you on the back. <laughs> it's been hard, hasn't it? <laughs> yeah, well, I, I was asking about dying about how much I write. <laughs> Yeah, I think that might, I don't think I have like a really compact one because it needs to be even more compact at this point in the arc in the episode. Uh, how have things been going for you? Anything? Any news you want to give? <laughs> <laughs> no, we're back in the hell world. What do you, what do you want um, me to say? No, you're fine. We maybe we just do comments and wrap up slightly early and yeah, hope. sure. Yeah. All right, let's get to the comments. Do you like my little beatbox there? I did like it, yeah. It's like if, if Darnell could beatbox. If Darnell could beatbox. That's not beatboxing. <laughs> it's just noise. All right, you ready for this? Yeah. <clears throat> Shaithalia says, holy fuck, this is such good timing. I'm listening to this on my birthday, 1027, and you did my request? Thank you, wow. Happy birthday. Yeah, we, we love to do the requests of our viewers. You know, some yeah. people uh, can request nicely. Some people make demands. <laughs> <laughs> some Not people <laughs> work so away. Back, plug the plug your ears. The so back. So back, just get out of here. <laughs> Go home, so back. You know, I would call such people leeches, but at least they have blood in their veins. <laughs> <laughs> There's something resembling life. Jesus A Christ! Dust he bunny hates with delusions of fangs. Not a Swedish skinwalker says. <laughs> this is a really interesting article and i agree with darnell that the scientist definitely has some tension with that cat i would love to get more scps but anything works the bits are why i at least am here thank you tan christ for forgiving the commenters for their transgressions no problem i'm i'm, I'm, I'm always ready to you know to forgive yeah you have a picture of fucking forgiveness all right 
You well, never held a grudge. God in your forgave life. everyone, right, in the Bible, apparently. But yet still bad <laughs> shit happens. <laughs> <like that. laughs> apparently is nasty word. <laughs> <laughs> what does that imply? You know what it implies. I'm not like, he fucked off, is what I'm saying. <laughs> Uh, MT2. I thought, I thought it was us. like a sneak racist thing. <laughs> what do you mean? I didn't know. <laughs> what do you mean racist? MT- Against I don't the know. divine? Just, <laughs> like, not everyone had been forgiven for whatever reason. <laughs> Jesus, you're trying to Hit. smear me. <laughs> did Sobek tell you Hit. to say that? <laughs> yeah, he did. Sobek has a 10 step plan for taking your place. Okay, continue. You were saying something? MT says, at least it's a cat and not an octillery. Ooh, buddy. Ooh. <laughs> MT Whoa. says, speaking of the fuck tillery, I'm reminded of the time Finn canonically fucked a pillow and had kids. About? In uh, Adventure Time, Finn goes to like a pillow kingdom uh, and he like grows old and he has pillow kids, implying he fucked like the pillow princess. Well, and then asked. he like climbs out of the pillow fort and he's like back to normal again, like his entire lifetime lived. <laughs> There's a Star Trek episode like that. Not a pillow, but he just lives his entire life and then have to go back. <laughs> it's fucked up. Yeah. And had kids. So what other Pokemon do you think are less natural? What do you mean uh, by, What do you mean? Why is this a topic of discussion in my comments? Uh, <laughs> what are you talking about? Less than natural? Also, do you mean... Ten- are you trying to say, like, which one... Is, wait, are you asking me which Pokemons are sex offenders? Yeah. That's what you're implying, um, right? That's what you want me to answer. I don't think it's nice for me to guess which Pokemon are sex oh, offenders. So, yeah. Uh, MT says, also, did Tan have an energy drink or something? The hyperactivity scares me. It's because I was enraged. <laughs> That's why. <laughs> My viewers... Uh, you- it's like, imagine that you you spent so long, like, standing on dirt, and then the dirt suddenly tries to rebel against you. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Imagine that the grass suddenly tried to stab your feet. Wouldn't you be angry? (laughs) Uh, Yeah, for sure. You know what? It kind of works as an analogy. (laughs) Uh, MT says... I mean, it can't do any damage, but surely you would become enraged. (laughs) Uh, I love the idea of that being like a person's reaction. Like, the grass grass, attacks their feet, doesn't do anything. And they don't go like, what the hell? And you go, how dare you? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Corpse <laughs> gets the weed whacker out. <laughs> it's like, which one of you did it? <laughs> Fine, what? I'll just cut a lot of you. <laughs> It'll be a slaughter. <laughs> it gets out the lawnmower. <laughs> it's time for Jack to let her rip. Uh, MT also says, if you hated 6280, then you'll probably also hate 7376. Or not. I don't know. It does have less edge. Uh, Dino Tail says, I cannot believe it. You guys skipped my last comment. How could you? I will now make oh, sure really? the perfect world of 6001 never comes to pass. No, and it's all your fault. The devil of Christmas. The devil of Krampus? <laughs> the devil of Christmas. <laughs> Specifically Christmas as a devil, just like Christianity. Yeah. Uh, I remember Santa 6, is the Jesus of Christmas. Let's be honest, really. Yeah, like, that is true. It's a form that Jesus assumes during the holiday season. That is true. So, uh, Dino Krampus also says, it must be Satan. <laughs> Dino also says, I remember 6001 because I was driving home with the family during a road trip and listening to the Exploring series video on it. It was a very coming, calming experience, presumably. That's not also, Tan, the 6000 contest <laughs> I'm glad leisure. you enjoyed the article, but Jesus. <laughs> Woo-wee! <laughs> also, Tan, the 6000 contest theme was nature, not future. Um, no. Uh, lastly... Daniel Zakheim says, after 200 episodes... You skipped the some of the comment. That's fucked up. You skipped the last comment and you no. skipped half of this one. What are you talking about? Dinosaurs Tales had more to say. No, he doesn't. Yeah, he does. I unironically don't see anything else. It's, it's just dot, dot, dot. He says, by the way, Tanhini, since you're most likely finished reading 6001 by now, I am once again giving you word of God powers. It's like Thanos when he gets all the Infinity Stones right now. <laughs> I don't see that. Mine, my hold on. Mine says he edited it, and I don't see that. Oh well, I don't know. Maybe he edited it again, but only I can see it. What do you think the compendium did for one of your anomalies, other than the mentioned statue one? Um, he they probably buried Kukulain in like a deep grave where he can't get out. Did but we like, read Kukulain? I think so. Yeah, I don't remember and it. We might read it next time then. 
Any one of you yeah. SCPs will do. <laughs> Same for you, Doc. We won't now. read it next time. We have recommendations now, all right? <laughs> I just recommended it to myself. All right, well, we know how your recommendations uh, are viewed by the populace. Eyes so back. He used to, he used to respect me. And so, such hideous words are poured into his ears. By Sobek! Same for you, Darnell. What did the compendium do for Milk Jesus? Oh, I don't know. Not so nice when they mention something that you don't like, huh? Why so serious, Tan? I'm still gunning for 6460. Also, the world-eating bird has returned. It's only a matter of time before the bowler returns as well. (laughs) He's giving me the Uh, post-credit scene of this episode, like, walking into a meeting. He's like, so, (laughs) you need someone to deal with Sobek, huh? (laughs) This will be a whole one. I'll strike him off this earth. (laughs) Oh, that works too. Uh, Daniel Zakheim says, after 200 episodes, the world-eating bird makes its triumphant return. We surely have mentioned of, it more than... We surely have mentioned we it have. since then. It's in the world-eating we bird. We mention it all the time. <laughs> the, uh, I think about it reading, constantly, at least. <laughs> yeah, same. In terms of reading recommendations, I have two. First is Tales from the Gas Station, a horror comedy web serial written by Jack Townsend about, about the misadventures of a cashier working at a paranormal gas station. The story consists of four volumes. I might be down for that. Yeah, that sounds interesting. Uh, for an SCP recommendation, I'd choose SCP-1322-J. We'll see. You didn't pitch that one to me, though, so I don't know what to expect. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Just throwing numbers at me. This is what happens when you have viewers try and recommend to an expert. <laughs> All right. Uh, what you thank you me? for... Uh, I was just... Yeah, I said Tanoni. Thank you for... Uh, you're welcome. Reading with me. Uh, you uh, take care and have a great day. <laughs> Why are you saying goodbye only to me? Do I have to leave and you just keep going? I have to tell the viewers a secret. It's <laughs> <laughs> so fucked up. It's like the end of the episode, but only for me. It's like, yeah, we're going to keep going. <laughs> <laughs> you <just> leave. <laughs> Anomalous, listen to me. Let me strike right. now. Let it's the others NCR. know. <laughs> so back. I'm moving in. No. <laughs> Don't worry, your place will be here soon. It'd be really funny if we had Sobek on for a guest episode next week. <laughs> My volume slowly gets quieter as the episode goes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it tells just him and me. Yeah. No, not me. All right, thank you all for watching. Bye! Bye!